Hello, have you always wanted to be a stylish little mermaid casually throwing some whales and doping at some morbs? Or perhaps the prospect of having a gun, uh, I mean, the harpoon makes you very very excited? Or perhaps you just want to see some of the otters firing cannons and bazookas? <laughs> if that's the case, then welcome to this quickie guide. I will show you the ropes on Corsair and hopefully get you started on your endgame PvE journey in spots like Oryx and Gyphins along with some combos to start you off. The first thing you have to know about getting Corsair, you need roughly about 1512 skill points to get all the essentials here and passives you need to be at an usable level at any game PvE, which is fairly doable assuming you are starting around 900 SP at Polly's Forest. You should be able to get around 1600 SP within a few hours, fully buffed using the 530% J scrolls as well as 300% EXP scrolls. And then afterwards, you need everything in the Awakening 3 and these following skills in the main hand. Absolute Ocean's Monarchy, which is an essential skill for repositioning as well as for a quick frontal guard. Absolute Jet Stream, which is kind of optional but very very useful if you need a few seconds of cheesy iframe in hair situations. Absolute Sea Stroke buffs your evasion by 12% and a very very useful uh, movement skill. Absolute Spiral Soak, a main hand damage skill that does okay in Awakening, flows very well from Sea Stroke. And Absolute Whale Song flows very well as well from Spiral Soak and Sea Stroke. Followed by these passives, Absolute Smooth Sailing, a primary movement ability, also your primary evasion self buff, always use this off cooldown from pack to pack. Absolute Riding Waves, another primary movement ability, mainly used for quick repositioning behind the mobs. Flow, Wave Skadado, your iframe, uh, it cannot be used on its own and needs to be chained from another ability beforehand. Fortunately though, it can be used after most primary damage skills in the Awakening Kit. Absolute Wave Breaker and Absolute Whirling Slash are nice flows to be used after your iframe. Whirling Slash is a semi-protected movement skill, has a 9% accuracy buff but we don't normally use this in Awakening. And after that, you need to hotbar these 5 skills. Your e-buff, Family's Honor, Labao on deck, Light them up, No Mercy Scallywax, and your Elvia skill. Moving on to combos, here are two phases that you need to, or maybe you already know, but they are the debuff phase and the damage phase. Now you start off primarily in the debuff phase by debuffing your enemies and buffing yourself before transitioning to the damage phase. Here is how I like to debuff my enemies. I start with quick slot, light them up, F, which is power slide for me, then space, which is oceans alert, shift E, close quarters charge, followed by down RMB, which is the last hit of close quarters high spirits. This combo along with my add-ons will give me the following buffs, AP plus 20, critical hit rate plus 20%, critical damage plus 27%, attack speed plus 7%, evasion plus 6%, and movement speed plus 20%, and debuff the mobs by 2 stacks of minus 15 DP. Do you note, shift E, close quarters charge, is an awakening signature miss skill, and only upon touching the mist, you get the additional buffs. It usually activates on its own, but sometimes you may have to stay in the same spot slightly longer to get the buffs. Once fully buffed and debuffed, I start with one of these following damage options. Option 1, Shift RMB, which is Wind Piercer Patraka. Then go into Shift RMB, Crow's Mark, and then Shift F, which is Open Fire. If the mobs aren't dead by then, I will add on option 2, which is Shift Q, Sun Shooter Patraka. Flows into Q slash RMB, which is Earth Printer Patraka. Take note, the flow of Render Patraka can be used after both Shift RMB, Wing Piercer Patraka, and Shift RMB, Crow's Mark, and after Space, Ocean Salir as well, which in itself can be comboed after Shift F, so you don't really need to specifically follow that order above. However, unless you're trying to tank or forward guard an attack, try not to start any combo with Shift RMB, which is Crow's Mark, as he has a very slow wind-up animation. And here is how the full combo looks like in grinding. Moving on to pack to pack movement, your primary movement ability is WF, which is C Mist. It grants you a 6% evasion buff and a 20% movement speed buff, followed by WRMB, which is spare no quarter. Alternatively, you can also perform Space Space, which is an unprotected movement ability that grants you a bit of vertical clearance. You can also go back to your Serenaka main hand by pressing WE, going into Mermaid Form, from which you can perform this combo WE, which is Z Stroll into the Shift E, which is Whale Song, to S E, Spiral Soak, before C swapping back to Awakening. To reposition behind a pack, you can use SF, which is Ocean's Monarchy, or a Directional Key plus RMB, or simply a Shift with the mouse looking at the correct direction. For pulling, I simply use RMB, or Shift RMB, Wing Piercer Patraka, 
or Chief Q, Sun Shooter Patraka for super long range pulls. Sun Shooter Patraka has the longest range amongst your Instacast skills, so I do recommend this one. And lastly for add-ons, here is what I use. Feel free to customize this according to your playstyle. And finally, here are some pointers for you. If you're in orgs and you see the bubbly orc wizard about to long cast his spells, you can use light them up to interrupt his cast. Yep. Okay, Sen, then you're stunned. Crosshair as a class in general does not do a whole lot of damage in PvE, and she does not clear spots amazingly fast either. I hate to say this, but this is not a class to go to if you want a super fast clearing uh, PvE grinder. For that, find favorites like the Succession Strikers, Life would be dream. and Lance, Still better picks. As some of you will know, they'll be wondering if Corsair should go evasion or DR. I will say that if you are succession, you belong to the face tagging group, so evasion you will be. For awakening, you can sort of make do with DR as well as evasion. Of course, uh, evasion synergizes better than DR for us. I have a one to one comparison on this topic, featuring myself using DR and evasion gears in Gaping Razia Underground coming up soon, so do watch out for that as it may already be out when you watch this video. Uh, the keyword here is may. Anyway, with all that being said, I can now officially send all of you new wannabe mermaid pirates onto land. Hopefully you don't get scared too soon. If you have any questions or comments or perhaps notice that I missed something, please do drop them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. I am in the process of setting up my own Discord server called Oho's Bevel Tea, where people with uh, fondness for diabetes gather to discuss how to further their condition. Once done, hopefully you will serve as a better platform for me to interact with all of y'all. If you enjoyed this guide or found it helpful, please do consider dropping a like or a sub or following on Twitch to help us spread our love of sugary bubble tea. With that, take care and goodbye. Oh, and be sure to buy some Ciao!